What's going on, everyone? My name is Matthews, and I'm joined today with Chris and Jimmy, giving you all our match day 14 recap of the Premier League. So without further ado, let's get right into some highlights of the weekend. Starting off with Arsenal versus Wolves. 2-1 for the Gunners. Goals from Saka, Odegaard, and Cunha. So Arsenal maintained first place until at least next week. Saka once again on the score sheet. 37 GA alone in 2023. Do we think Saka has a shot at the Ballon d'Or or at least podium if Arsenal win the Prem or make some noise in the UCL? Well, of course. Any any player that's having this well, uh, good of a season will have a chance at the podium. Uh, but it's if, if Arsenal could actually make a, a wave into the UCL, mm-hmm. possibly keep this run going into the end of the year, unlike they did last year. But with the form that he's in, definitely. Definitely. I think for me it's going to come down to a lot of what happens in the Euros as well. Um, last season we saw Holland had a phenomenal season in the Prem and in Champions League of course with that legendary treble and breaking the goal scoring record and he still didn't win the Ballon d'Or obviously he had the nice podium finish but uh, I think Saka will have to show up for England in the Euros as well um, but no what he's been doing in the Prem has been phenomenal uh, I think he's definitely the, the key man for the Gunners if they want to have a shot at winning the Prem see Arsenal's golden boy anyways moving on next game Brentford versus Luton 3-1 for Brentford Goals from Mope, me, Baptiste, and Brown. But I want to talk about one player in particular. Picked up an assist today, Brian and Buemo. So him and two other players, Saka and Salah, are the only players to have 10-plus goals and 10-plus assists in the Premier League this year. Should we put some more respect on Buemo's name? And can we see him make a move to a bigger club? Yeah, I think we see these players almost every season in the Prem that will be playing for that, you know, mid-table club, um, and they'll be the key player for that team. Uh, and then we always see them kind of move on. Like we're thinking of those players that played for Brighton that moved on to Chelsea. Um, but I can definitely see Mbueno making a move. Uh, for me personally, I, he screams Liverpool to me. I think as a, as a Liverpool type player, um, you know, he has the speed uh, to play in a Klopp side. Um, so I can see him taking the ne- next step to a team like Liverpool. But no, he's been phenomenal for sure. And he's been one of the main reasons why Brentford have been in with a shout of, of a conference league finish. Yeah, I would say he's he's in the spotlight this year because now they don't have Ivan Tony, and he's the main man now, and and it's obviously looking great for them because he's he's been he's been that leader in that team. But can he get a move? I would say yeah, with with the amount of output he's been doing, yeah. I I don't think Liverpool for me. I think more of like a Spurs. I just feel like he would fit right into that front three. Boom. All right, we'll see about that. Moving along, Liverpool versus Fulham. Crazy comeback here. 4-3 for Liverpool. We had a Leno own goal after a nice Trent free kick. Wilson, McAllister, Tete, Endo, and then Trent. So Liverpool with a big comeback today. Two goals late in the game, late 80th minute goals. Liverpool is showing some great resilience throughout this game here. Do we think Liverpool have the best mentality in the league? Are they the mentality monsters? Yeah, for sure. I feel like they have it one year, then they don't have it. Then another year they have it, then they don't have it. This is the year that they have it. And when they have it, They always have the best mentality. And it might not just be in England. It might be in the world. I would say Liverpool this year definitely has the best mentality. In the world, yeah, I think that's that's a crazy shout for sure. But I think in the Prem, um, they have the most experience. Like their core players, been there, done that. You know, they've been through a lot together, winning leagues, losing leagues, winning Champions League, losing Champions League. They've seen a lot together. And I think, you know, they know how to rally. Um, but Trent has been in absolutely blistering hot form. I know we spoke about him last week, and now we're speaking about him again. Um, you know, one of the best fullbacks in the world for me, um, and in this generation as well. Could be two goals in this game, obviously, with the own goal from Leno, but a fantastic winner there from Trent to, to seal the comeback. Yeah, but that's 4-3 for Liverpool. And moving along to Newcastle versus the Manchester United. 1-0 for Newcastle, goal courtesy of Gordon. So United lose to Newcastle three straight times in all comps. For the first time since 1992. On paper, is this Newcastle team really that much better than United's? What do you guys think the deciding factor is here? I think on paper, it's it's definitely comparable to United's. You know, they've both made some some good moves. I think Newcastle have made more low-key moves with better results. And United have made those kind of high-profile, high-money uh, signings that just haven't worked out well so far. Um, I thought personally going into this one, I thought United were going to kind of have that comeback game in the Prem, you know, coming off that tough result in the Champions League. I thought this was going to be, you know, that rally game for Ten Hag and the boys, um, but it just wasn't meant to be. Um, you know, Newcastle have been solid in the league. 
Uh, Gordon, in particular, has been kind of coming up with those key goals for them. And another one, no win for, for Newcastle. Uh, sees Ten Hag missing out on points again. Yeah. Uh, I do think the teams are very similar, as you said. But at one point, this United team was better on paper. But due to the fact that they came to United, they gone worse, which makes their team sheet look worse. But I, I, the fees that these t- these players go for, you can't complain with United. To me, it's it's the manager. I know they've been to, through many managers, but they just can't get it right. And especially with Ten Hag, he's got all the players he needed and still not doing the job. Let's talk about the match of the week. City versus Spurs, 3-3. Crazy game here. Classic Prem ball. Goals from Sun. We had an own goal. Foden, Lo Celso, Grealish, and Kulusevsky. So, Ange coming to that to have with four fullbacks playing the defense. Nine players out injured, one suspended. Yet Postacoglu doesn't change up his tactics. Does a fully fit Spurs challenge for the title? Well, I think we saw it at the beginning of the season. They they were they were challenging for the title. You know, they were they were top of the league. You know, pretty much undefeated uh, until that injury kind of wave hit them. Um, so we definitely can see that they had the quality to at least you know make a push, make a run. How long would that have lasted? We don't know. Um, and obviously, they don't have to necessarily worry about European football as well, which I'm sure helps. Um, but no, I think Ange has been a great pickup for for Spurs. On the contrary to, to you know, as we were speaking about Ten Hag and United, I think Spurs have really got it right with Ange. Um, you know, seems to be a great man manager. The players love to play for him from what it looks like. Um, and then as well, like sticks to a style of play. And I personally rate that. I love when a manager has a style of play, sticks to it no matter who's there, who's not. Um, and they're rewarded with a point uh, at the Etihad uh, against a very good Man City side. Yeah. Uh, I do think Ange is a, a great manager, fantastic manager. But do I think they would have challenged for the title? No. I know they did at the beginning, but injuries will catch up to them eventually, even though they did already, because they don't have a deep squad at all. And it, it, that's just how it goes. If you don't have the depth, it's tough to compete. So it seems like we're always talking about referees in these recaps. So once again, we had referee Simon Hooper changing his mind after originally signaling, signaling for an advantage. But he then denied it while Grealish was pretty much on a breakaway. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Poor poor refing. It's just poor refing because you can't... When you see a ref change their mind, it's not only going to mess up the game. It also messes up the way players are going to think after because now they're going to think, oh, this is not going to work because the ref is going to call it. They're on, he's not on our side anymore. Like he's, He was never on your side, but he's just going to go against you now. And you could, you saw it in the game as we're looking right now. You see all the players, they hated the ref after that. And it just kind of went downhill from there. It was a very tight game. It, it was just going to end that way. Yeah, I think you even saw with the with the facial expression from the fourth official there as Pep was yelling at him. He looked like he's like, oh, maybe he blew that a little too early. And I think that's what it was. He was a little bit too uh, quick with the whistle. Um, I think, you know, worst case scenario, if it doesn't turn out to be an advantage for City, he can still blow it back. Um, you know, and if it's offside, that's what VAR there is for. Uh, so I think at the end of the day, you need to let that play go through. If it ends up being offside, it's offside. If it ends up being a disadvantage, you call it back for the advantage. Um, but I think you need to let that play at least go a little bit further than that because that could have been a totally different game. Grealish is through. Maybe he finishes that chance, and that's a full three points for City, and we're having a totally different conversation right now. 100%. But looking at what's to come next week, we have United versus Chelsea. Will the Reds continue on this downward spiral or will Ten Hag and his men step up? You would think United would step up, but I think they're going to lose. I think Chelsea, they just got to win. So United just got to lose. They're on the up. And I don't think Ten Hag has been getting it right like at all. So I know Chelsea hasn't either, but I'm going to go with Chelsea. Yeah, Chelsea seems to have, you know, Chelsea were where United are now. I think earlier in the season, they just weren't able to get it right. Uh, but now it looks like, um, you know, with Pochettino, they're they're starting to get things right. They're getting a result against a good Brighton uh, earlier today. Um, so I definitely think it's going to be a good one. Um, if Ten Hag loses this one, I think, you know, the water starts to get hot. You have to think if he loses against Chelsea in this one. But yeah. But last but not least, we have City versus Villa. Third place versus fourth. What are we thinking for that game? Yeah, it's crazy that we're saying City versus Villa is, is a third place clash. I think, you know, when we think of City, we always think one, two. And when we think of Villa in the last few years, maybe just outside the top four. But uh, Emery has really got it right with, with Villa. It's going to be an exciting game for sure. Um, but I think, you know, C- City needs to break this little silly run that they're on. You know, they've been dropping points, uh, tying games. Uh, and I think this is just going to be that game where they, they wake up um, and they get the full three points and they're back in that title, title conversation again.
Yeah, I believe Rodri picked up his uh, <coughs> enough yellows to miss the next game. So I believe yeah. that's against uh, Villa. And we've seen when they didn't have Rodri in the team, they they tend to struggle. So I, my prediction here is going to be a, a tie. I don't see either team winning this. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up match day 14. Make sure to subscribe for Fubo to catch all the Premier League action.